Hello everybody and welcome back to another spoiler review with me, a Border Prince. Today we are talking about the Primark novel Vulcan, Lord of Drakes, I believe. Um, which is part of the ongoing Primark series where they tell sort of short stories about uh, the Primarchs during the Great Crusade. I haven't done one of these for a while. Going to crack on with it though. Uh, Want to catch up with heresy. This one's... Alright, so firstly, this has got to be the shortest novel I've ever seen. Uh, novella, I guess it is. It's not a novel. It's it's four and a half hours long, I believe. Which, when you compare this to the one that came out afterwards, um, how how long is that? How long is it? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Does it tell me all in all? Well, it's about four and a half hours long. Just under, it's under five hours long. Um, let's have a look at that one. How long is the Jakarta? Yeah, six hours. So that one's over six hours long. That's short as well, but that's about normal. But four hours odd is a bit weird for a novel. It's very, very, very short. But anyway, um, there's some odd things about this, and I don't know. It, it rubbed me. The, it didn't rub me the wrong way exactly. It's just it seemed a bit weird. And there's a lot of stuff about. I don't know whether it's being covered in some of the newer Horace Heresy stories uh, covering Vulcan and so on. Uh, you know, going into their backstory and stuff. I was never a big fan of the Salamander series that came out a couple of years ago. I could only really get through the two books. Um, it was a struggle. <laughs> but it's just not for me, you know. Um, I don't know, man. The Salamander seem fucking stupid. I, I just, you know, like that's my initial thing. I'm like, afterwards, I'm like, okay, that's fine. But they seem a bit dim. Why have they done this? <clears throat> and there's some weird stuff in this book that seems like, I don't know, misjudged? Like, why, why would you do that? Um, okay, so what's the story? So, all right, for some reason, um, Vulcan was found, <clears throat> and then he wasn't uh, deposited with his legion like everybody else. For some reason, the emperor kept him at his side in secret, uh, and then for some reason, the emperor sent him to fight alongside... Instead of sending him to his legion, which is out there, <clears throat> sent them to fight uh, with the Iron Hands, so he did that for a couple of years, so he's like, years have gone by at this point since he's been found. His old backstory on Nocturne and everything, blah, blah, blah. Then <clears throat> he goes back to Nocturne. It takes him a bunch of years to raise only 3,000 new initiates when, you know, you consider, <clears throat> you know, tens of thousands of Astartes were created from the populations of uh, of the various different worlds that the Primarchs come, for, come from. And, you know, use, utilising the full resources of the Imperium. And then... He raises 3,000, which you can think, oh, okay, well, you know, Nocturne's like a death world, kind of, uh, mostly. Um, it's only got seven cities, blah, 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 so there's only so many people who could be recruited. Whatever. They could have got other people. I don't know what's special about the people in Nocturne. No one else did that, you know? <clears throat> an initiate's an initiate. If it's got good genes and good stock, then that's all that matters. But anyway, um, yeah, he's on this planet, and, right, there's moments where he says the true reason why he hasn't joined his legion yet. But they never actually tell us that. Nothing actually gets told. That's why I'm like, I don't understand what the story of this, I don't understand what the importance of this story is. It doesn't really tell us anything at all. I mean, what I did like, okay, so I'll go into what I did like. The battle scenes were great. Um, they go into this death world, how he portrays this uh, these volcanoes going off, the importance of the volcanoes, using the volcanoes as big... As, as giant, like, you know, cannons to shoot lava at the orcs. Um, fighting the orcs within this giant rock, uh, this space orc planetoid rock. Um, good stuff. But the means of getting there is fucking bizarre. So they got this thing. It's kind of like Thunderbirds 2. Um, it's a big green thing with a uh, drill on the front. Um, and Because right, <laughs> we get some nice lore about the, um, the unification wars here. So the Emperor... Uh, Used the uh, the 19th Legion. Is it the 19th or the 18th? I forget. But use them. Uh, they use these drilling machines uh, to drill down to fight this enemy that had uh, like underground fortresses and shit. And uh, yeah, they thought they were all dead until one of the, this one shot up. This is the Spear of Vulcan or something. <laughs> I forgot the names already. Um, that's the problem with this book. It was like kind of, uh, it was all right. It was good. It's worth listening to. And my links are below. But it was like, it was a bit nothing -y. You know, there was no real substance. There was no great revelation or anything. There's just a lot of little bits. And the whole thing with Vulcan, I mean, you can get past it with being like, oh, it was the Emperor's plan and stuff. 
but at no point does that make any sense. I don't know whether I'm missing something, whether stuff has been revealed within the wider law, but I don't think it has. To explain this, it seems like, eh, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, why are you doing that? Um, so, yeah, they've got this, he's building this thing, the last thing he's doing when he's constructing this new force, which he must have some of these existing legionaries there. He has, he's got one at least. He's like acting as a sort of chaplain type thing. Um, he's from the actual Terran Legion. And, I mean, I assume they must have had other ones there. Otherwise, how could you train up all of these Astartes? You know, you need other Astartes there. I mean, why would you not have other Astartes there to help train them? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so anyway, they're building this thing. And it's like a tank thing. It's like enormous. It can fit a thousand Marines in it. And it's got a big drill on the front. So, you know, it's a tank with a giant drill on the front. Right, that's cool. So, we'll come back to that. So, what's happened is, um, for some reason, the Salamander's Legion has not been deployed like every other legion uh, as part of expeditionary fleets and so on. Again, Vulcan's been discovered years ago, and he hasn't gone and joined his boys. He's just that, for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, for reasons. So... They end up getting called to this area because the orcs have invaded and there's no other force that can respond for some reason. Um, so they get sent there, 19,000 of them. A good force of uh, Astartes, you know. Um, Vulcan's heard as well while he's at the Emperor's side, people mocking his, his own legion, saying they're suicidal, you know. They're too, like, it's like a stubborn suicidalness. And we know there's the nature of the salamanders. They're probably one of the only what you'd say is the closest to a compassionate legion there is, who will glad will sacrifice themselves to protect civilians and stuff like this. Now, other legions will as well, but not if it comes at the price of, you know, a bit like a victory. Yeah, that they'll, they'll put victory first, destroying the enemy first. Um, you know, they'll gladly glass a planet if it means that. The salamanders wouldn't. You know, they're, they're the ones who will hold and defend places. Uh, nice, like uh, Hell's Ridge is the one where that comes through. The, the best scene of that, where the Black Templars are disgusted by the Salamanders because they won't leave, uh, they won't go and hunt the enemy down. They're merely staying there to defend the civilian population, to defend barricades and stuff. Whereas the, you know, the Black Templars are like, nah, fuck that shit. We need to kill everybody for the Emperor revving the chainswords. Nice stuff. But this one, okay, so they go there. Um, they, this orc force is too strong for them, apparently. Uh, their, their fleet... Uh, their legion. So we've got an entire legion here again, smashed by an orc fleet, which, you know, it's a big fleet, but still. Um, they get pushed back, better push back, better push back. Uh, they've they've hold, held out and, like, managed to evacuate, like, uh, colonists and, you know, people. And anyway, they go to this, uh, it's the Taras Gap or something. They go to this one planet and they get beaten and they withdraw, they flee. Uh, they, their fleet's fucked. They've only got one sort of major battleship left, which was... Uh, which was their their command, their flagship. And uh, <clears throat> then they uh, they push back. They get pushed back to another world. And for some reason... Now, I don't know. It, it, it isn't super clear why they ended up here. Because um, they could have gone anywhere. And the rationale from this commander, this Astartes commander who's commanding in the place of the Primarch, is that, like... Uh, this would be a good place to hold them, and we'll, we'll, we'll win here or we'll all die. And it's like, well, that's stupid, isn't it? Why would you do that? Why is he even thinking like that? Like, there's, you know, like, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to defend anyone if you get wiped out, mate. Plus, as well, you, you're looking at the destruction of your legion, your brotherhood. Like, that's really fucking stupid. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you know, it's been compassionate and commitment to the cause, but there's like, you know, you've got to think more than a day ahead of things, mate. You know, it's a bit fucking stupid, right? So that's what they do. But then you do get these amazing moments where these volcanoes are going off and it's really well captured. It reminded me of that Roman, uh, who was it? There was some, I think it was a Roman general, a senator, who wrote something about like uh, Pompeii going up and Herculaneum and uh, his descriptions of how the people were dying and stuff like this in gas clouds and shit like that. Um, and, and, you know, if you ever watch any footage of volcanoes going off and stuff, it's, it's very much that. Uh, he's captured it very nicely. David Andal's a good writer. Um, but again, it's like, okay, that's fine. So they end up sitting on this rock, surrounded, cut off, facing extinction. And it's like, well, why did you do that? You're not going to win there. I mean, I can understand if you go there for a bit, bleed them, then run away. And that's what they've been doing. But 
then they're not getting trapped here. But it's like, well, why are you trapped? Just warp off. Why did you even warp into this system? Just keep flying through the warp. What's what's, what's going on? What's going on? Um, <laughs> the, the thing is as well with this book, there are many comedy moments, um, which I've got used to in my recent book reading. You know, I want, I want Space Marines to be making actual good jokes. There's no good jokes in this. It, it, not really at all, you know? <laughs> there's no there's no laughing at themselves or making you know it's oh, Lucas the Trickster is a funny book uh, you know Fabius Bile is a funny book uh, they both you know all of them um, this ain't got no jokes it's got no humour in it at all you know <laughs> it's got no humour in it and it's not really telling me anything interesting it's like oh, like ground shattering like oh my god like the Perturabo novel this very much reminds me of the Gilliman one um, you know, got some interesting bits in it, worth reading, adds to the lore, adds to the background, but still, eh, you know, <laughs> I'm selling it to you. Um, yeah, so then Vulcan, for some reason, he's sat on this planet and he, his little mate's telling, asking him, well, when are we going to join the Legion? And he's like, oh, I don't know, when the Emperor tells me. Okay, where are they? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you know? Why don't you know? What the fuck are you talking about? You're putting so much importance about building Thunderbird 2 that you're... Uh, it is Thunderbird 2, isn't it? Let's just double check. Thunderbird 2. I just want to check. I want to check before... You know, I want to get this right. Thunderbird 2. No, it's not. What's Thunderbird 2? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that colour anyway. Thunderbirds. I'm sure there was one with a giant drill on the front. I can't believe I'm looking this up. No, there wasn't. Okay, well, it's kind of like Thunderbird 2, but with a drill on the front. What the fuck am I thinking of then? I don't know. But yeah, that's it, basically. So it's Thunderbird 2 with, uh, with tracks and, uh, and a drill on the front. <laughs> What the fuck am I thinking of? I don't know what I'm thinking of. I'm sure it reminded me of the Thunderbirds anyway. Maybe it's just because it's green. I'm imagining it's green. Anyway. <laughs> so, he gets a message from the Emperor. The Emperor comes into his dreams. Instead of like just sending a message to him saying, you know, your lads are here. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just... Uh, Anyway, they go ahead and they go to this system. They manage to get there just in time as well, even though it's like on the other side of the Eastern Fringe and stuff, and no one else could get to them aside from these guys. And it's like, well, no offence, mate, but you've got 3,000 warriors. What's that going to do? I know you're a Primarch, but still, if your 19,000 guys couldn't do anything against these guys, what are you going to do? Anyway, they turn up. They find out that the last remaining ship did a suicide run into the space rock uh, planetoid, the, 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 the attack moon, um, even though it didn't work, it did, they didn't, for some reason, didn't manage to penetrate it. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, so that's the escape route gone, well done. Um, <laughs> it's just like, are, are, these, are the salamanders stupid? I just don't understand why they're even doing this. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you do this? You know, I can understand hit and run attacks and dragging it out and, you know, bleeding the enemy. But all standing on this planet and dying, it doesn't matter how many you kill. If they just, like, wipe you out and then they can just do whatever they want to these humans, you've, like, failed on a complete level. Even the people you've managed to save will get caught and killed. And they might get caught and killed anyway. But at least if you survive, you can fight another day. I... <laughs> just... Why? Why are you doing this? So he turns up with 3,000 dudes. Um, it says this has happened, sees this attack moon hanging over the planet, fleets there, you know, the orcs are invading. Uh, for some reason, they're like, oh, you know, the Terrans might be dead. Because obviously they would be. Um, <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff that happens on the surface. Again, I like what he's done with the volcanoes and everything. It's good stuff. Nice little battles that are kicking off. Um, but, uh, yeah, then Vulcan's like, no, we will use Thunderbird 2. And uh, we will board the space rock and plant uh, charges at certain places. Seven charges. Now, 
I, I, demolition charges are very effective, I imagine, and they make a big thing about Vulcan uh, being like all good with crafting things. You know, he's like, you know, it's that blacksmith. He's the blacksmith meme given life, but uh, you know, that's fine. But they've just you just fired a fucking um, a battle cruiser into this thing, and it went supernova with its reactor, and it did nothing. But you're gonna get on which is where I'll get to with Thunderbird 2. They're going to board Thunderbird 2 because not only is it a tank that can go underground with a giant drill on the front and it uh, can fit a thousand marines in it, um, it's also a spaceship, but kind of like a giant boarding torpedo. So what they're going to do is, and this is where the sense comes in, instead of uh, you know launching multiple boarding torpedoes as normally you normally would, um, which makes sense, you know, so... You know, definitely some of your Marines will get on board. You know, they're smaller targets, harder to hit. What you're going to do is put all your eggs in one basket and jump on this thing and fire it at this planet with a thousand men on it. That's what you're going to do. Hoping, hoping that it drills through where this spaceship didn't manage to do that. Um, spaceship going, a battle cruiser, flagship of the uh, Salamander's Legion at that point rams into a planet and does nothing, this little rocket with a drill on the front is definitely going to get through with a thousand men on it and your Primark. Awesome. Okay, good good thinking, good thinking. Don't launch multiple ones. Um, don't launch multiple ones aside it. Uh, just launch this one. Just launch this one into the middle of an Orc fleet and, you know, it should all work out fine. So that's what they do. <clears throat> and it charges in and... You know, luckily, it does get through the crust. And uh, to be fair, it is nice. <laughs> it's quite funny that it's going through the, you know, uh, it blasts through. Uh, it goes through a spaceship on the way there that tries to get in its path because they detect it. Because it's fucking massive. It's got to be massive. <laughs> you know, it's got thousand marines aboard. Um, it's like a little spaceship. Uh, yeah, the, the, the rockets, for some reason, it's got, you know, somehow it's got enough fuel on it to keep it going. But, you know... Vulcan's like a master craftsman. So, you know, he's good at making hammers and also building mini spaceships. The importance of this as well is, like I say, it was used in the Terran War and he took it uh, <clears throat> as a relic of the Legion to help unify the Legion, which is important afterwards as well because, um, well, we'll get to it. So they go through, they drill through. They get to this thing. Uh, they basically fight their way for the Orcs. They fight the war boss. He fights the war boss. Uh, <laughs> and... Yeah, um, they plant the charges and, uh, yeah, they did the job. It's good, great. And they get off because they have to leave that behind, obviously. So it's a good job that they made this for this one situation. There's no attempt to recover it. There's no mention of them building another one because it was super useful. It's gone. Doesn't matter now. Forget it. I don't think they even mention it to the guys, the Terra Marines that they do meet and save from annihilation on the planet. Uh, so that was good. That wasn't a waste of time. I mean, it worked, so it isn't a waste of time. But still, it's like, well, you could have just used normal boarding torpedoes. Why'd you fuck around with this? This is what's wrong with it for me. <laughs> and that's it, really. They land on the planet. They kill more orcs. They kill the orc war boss. He does have a nice moment where he just, like, cuts the uh, war boss's arms off. And then rams his, rams his claw into his chest. And then shoots him point blank in the face with his fancy plasma pistol. Brilliant. I don't understand what the point of this story is because it's, then it's like, well, we've met now. Yay, finally. And it's like, well, why didn't you meet? In the, we get no explanation of why they didn't meet anyway. What's the... I don't understand. I know, I suppose it's capturing a moment, the unification of their legion, but I don't understand why it wasn't unified from the fucking first place. There's a the whole thing of, is the emperor trying to dwindle them down? Um, so, you know, for some reason. And it's like, well, why? Why? <laughs> why would he do that? What was the point in that? No other legion has had a problem, you know. Even the even the uh, the world eaters, you know. Eventually, they came around <laughs> to Angron. You know, it's like, uh, why, why? I don't understand. I mean, you could well. I suppose you could point to the, the dark angels. They had a problem there. Um, a couple of. I suppose there is reasoning, but there's no reasoning given. There's no reasoning like that given. You know, it's just like what. Well, he's the only one that's been treated like this for some reason, with no explanation. I don't understand. Maybe it's something I'm missing, like I say. Maybe it's been covered in the uh, the heresy books. But at the minute, I ain't got a fucking clue. Plus, he's got a sword, even though he's supposed to have a hammer the whole time. He's got the sword on the front cover as well, so it's not like a writer's error. But, like, 
I don't understand the thing with the sword. He's supposed to have an hammer. You know, he's a master of the forge. Why has he got a sword? I don't know if that's a heresy thing that I'm missing, that I don't know, potentially. But, uh, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> I'm hoping the White Scars one I'm going to read with uh, Jagata Khan is, is more entertaining. But, yeah, it was all right. It's worth reading. Um, it adds something, I guess, to the to the lore, to the background. But it's kind of a, just a bit like, uh, it's a, you know, it's just a, it's it's a more chunky short story, but it's got no meat to it. You know, it's got no, it's not like the Perturabo one. It's not like the way of the uh, Lorgar one. Um, it's not like the Ferris Man, Ferris Manus one. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not really. I don't know. It's just kind of meh. <laughs> That's my review. Now. I'm going to go, because that's all I've really got to say, to be honest. If you want to pick this up, use my links. Uh, it is worth getting. Uh, it's just, there's better ones. Three out of five. There we go. I'll give you a three out of five. <laughs> I'll see you later. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, yeah, more again next week. Don't know what yet, but we'll see. All right. See you later. Cheers.